Sayın Emre Alıç'ı açılış konuşmasını yapmak üzere sahneye davet ediyoruz. Değerli misafirlerimiz, sevgili proje yöneticileri, çok değerli konuşmacılarımız, Ankara 2015 Proje Yönetim Zirvesi'ne hoş geldiniz. İstanbul'daki zirvemizden sonra dokuzuncusunu düzenlediğimiz zirvede sizleri görmekten dolayı çok mutluyuz. Burada olduğunuz için teşekkür ederiz. Hepinizin hafta içi bir günde buraya gelmesi bize yaptığımız işin önemi bir kez daha hatırlatıyor. Ankara'da iş hayatının telaşında ilgi alanlarımıza yönelik bazı konuları takip etmekte zorlanıyor, zaman ayırıp yenilikleri takip edemeyebiliyoruz. Bunu göz önünde bulundurarak bugün tüm gün boyunca kalkınma ekseninde proje yönetim dünyasında neler olup bitiyor, son projeler neler sizlerle paylaşalım ve tartışalım istedik. Değişen dünyanın, gelişen teknolojinin, büyüyen ekonominin yarın bugünden daha çok proje yöneticisine ihtiyacı olduğunu biliyoruz. Ülkemiz kalkınması için her sektörde yürütülen büyük ya da küçük projelerin her geçen gün her zamankinden daha kaliteli yönetilmesi gerektiğini düşünüyoruz. Ülkemizde de belirli olgunluğa gelen proje yönetim mesleğinin daha ileriye gitmesi için hepimiz mesleğimizi ilkelerimize bağlı yapmaya özen gösteriyoruz. PMI Türkiye'de ülkemizde proje yöneticilerinin bir araya gelmesini kolaylaştırarak bu ağın genişlemesine yardımcı olmaya çalışıyor. Çünkü biliyoruz ki paylaştıkça, birbirimizden öğrendikçe daha hızlı ilerliyoruz. İşte bu zirvede bu amaca hizmet eden etkinliklerden sadece birisi. Diğer etkinliklerimizi de bu zirveden sonra takip etmeye devam edeceğinizi umuyoruz. Proje yönetim zirvesi etkinliğinin tüm hazırlığı gönüllü ekip tarafından yapıldı. Gördüğünüz her şey sabah 8, akşam 6 işi olan arkadaşların PMI Türkiye adına gönüllülükleriyle, gönüllülükleriyle gerçekleşti. Hepsiyle bu akşam kapanış oturumunda tanışacaksınız. Buradan tüm arkadaşlarıma çabalar için tekrar teşekkür ediyorum. Proje profesyonellerine yakışır bir etkinlik yapmaya çok inanmıştık. Bu amaç ile çalıştık. Kusurlarımız var ise şimdiden affınıza sığınıyoruz. Sadece proje ekibi değil, konuşmacılarımız da gönüllülük esası ile bugün buradalar. Hepsine ayrı ayrı Tekrar teşekkürlerimizi sunuyorum. Sizler de bugün burada iseniz proje yönetimine gönül verenlerdensiniz biliyoruz. Özellikle belirtmek istiyoruz ki Türkiye'mizin dört bir yanından Ordu'dan, Bursa'dan, Balıkesir'den, İstanbul'dan, Çorum'dan ve birçok yerden aramızda katılımcılar var. Herkese hoş geldiniz diyor. Teşekkür ediyoruz. Kendinizi yeni şeyler duymaya, ilham almaya ve heyecanlanmaya hazırlayın. Bir o kadar da paylaşmaya. Lütfen oturumlarımızda konuşmacılarımıza sorular sorun. Kahve molalarında meslektaşlarımızla tanışın. Çünkü biz bu etkinliğin herkes için çok verimli geçmesini istiyoruz. Zirvemize bu yıl Top Ekonomi ve Teknoloji Üniversitesi ev sahipliği yapıyor. Kendilerine ve diğer tüm sponsor ve destekçilerimize tüm destekleri için teşekkür ediyoruz. Son olarak bir bilgilendirme yapmak istiyorum. Oturum aralarında perdelerde bilgilendirmesini göreceğiniz anket çalışmasına ve sosyal medya hashtag çalışmasına Katılan katılımcılar arasında gün sonunda yapılacak çekilişle sürpriz hediyeler verecektir. Katılımınızı bekliyoruz. Mikrofonu karşılama konuşmasını yapmak üzere Top Üniversitesi Ekonomi ve Top Üniversitesi Rektörü Sayın Profesör Doktor Adem Şahin Bey bırakmadan önce bir kez daha geldiğiniz için teşekkürler ediyorum. Keyifli bir zirve diliyorum. Günaydın. Efendim benim ismim Adem Şahin. Top Ekonomi ve Teknoloji Üniversitesi rektörüyüm. Sizlere üniversitemiz adına hoş geldiniz diyorum. Sizleri burada ağırlamaktan, burada görmekten büyük bir memnuniyet duyduğumuzu özellikle ifade etmek istiyorum. Bu zirvenin başarılı geçmesini, ülkemizin gelişmesine, kalkınmasına, büyümesine, kaynaklarımızı daha verimli kullanmamıza büyük katkılar sağlamasını temenni ediyorum. Ayrıca da emeği geçen her seviyedeki arkadaşın gönüllü, gönülsüz bu işe destek veren herkese de ayrıca e, teşekkürlerimi sunuyorum. Malumunuz kalkınma, büyüme, gelişme çoğu zaman makro, çoğu zaman da mikro seviyede de kullanılan kelimeler. Ama genelde büyümeyi bir tarafa bırakırsanız kalkınmanın ve gelişmenin daha çok makro bazlı kullanıldığını görüyoruz. Ama sonuçta e, bu çağın e, özellikle son yıllarının en fazla kullanılan kelimeleri arasına proje ve proje yönetimi kavramı girdi. 
Çünkü kaynakların daha etkin, daha verimli, daha hedefe odaklı kullanılmasını teminen daha disiplinli bir çalışma yapmak gerektiği e, gerçeğini dünya hemen hemen her alanda fark etti. Kaynakların sınırlılığı ister istemez insanları proje bazlı düşünmeye itti. İşin özü ne? İşin özü şu. Hayal ediyor olacaksınız, fikriniz olacak. Bir konuda hedef koyacaksınız, proje geliştireceksiniz. Projeniz desteklenecek, projeniz izlenecek vesaire. Yani bütün proje süreçleri artık hayatımızın değişmez parçaları haline geldi. Ve az önce e, açılış konuşmasında da e, değerli arkadaşımızın ifade ettiği üzere neredeyse artık benim mesleğim budur diyecek bir grup ortaya çıktı. Yani Ve bu grubun esasında e, yaptığı iş kaynakları daha etkin kullanmak adına gerçekleştirilen projelere öncülük etmek, yardımcı olmak, kalemi almak, izlemek, etkisini tayin etmek. Yani o sürecin her yerinde acaba bir yerinde olabilir miyiz diye etkin bir katılım koymak. Ben e, burada bulunuş sebebim sizlere bir hoş geldiniz demek. Bunu da e, zannediyorum fazlasıyla söylediğimi e, düşünüyorum. E, şayet bir nezaketsizlik olarak almazsanız Konuşmamın hemen arkasından ayrılmak durumundayım. Çünkü üniversitemizin bugün e, savunma sanayi müsteşarlığı, Havesan, Tayi, Aselsan gibi e, savunma sanayi şirketleriyle savunma sanayine uzman araştırmacı yetiştirmekle ilgili bir imza töreni var. Buradan hemen oraya geçmek durumundayım. Hepinizden çok özür diliyorum. Burada bulunduğunuz süre içerisinde e, üniversite olarak e, her türlü ihtiyacınızı karşılamada ve sizleri ağırlamakta umarım bir hata etmeyiz. Tekrar hoş geldiniz, hayırlı olsun diyorum efendim. Çok değerli konuklar, PMI Türkiye'nin iletişim direktörü olarak ben de sizlere hoş geldiniz diyorum. Bugün burada bulunmanız çok önemli çünkü bizler kalkınmada proje yönetiminin öneminin farkındayız. Fakat sizler gibi sosyoekonomik etki gücü yüksek kişilerin bir arada bulunması ve bu etkinliği desteklemesi e, proje yönetimi bilincinin yaygınlaşması için çok çok önemli. Teşekkür ediyorum hepinize. E, şu anki konuğumuz e, PMI Global'in e, Board of Directors e, üyeleri arasında olan Chair of Strategy Committee, Türkçe İngilizce karıştı özür diliyorum. Strateji Geliştirme Gözetim Komitesi Başkanı e, Sayın Dina Gordon Parla. E, kendisi bilişim teknolojileri başta olmak üzere birçok alanda e, strateji, strateji geliştirme, iş dönüşümü, e, proje program ve portfolyo yönetimleri alanında e, liderlik uygulamaları yapmış. Dünya çapında tanınan bir insan. Kendisini davet ediyorum. Please join me welcoming her. Kendisinin konuşması İngilizce olacak. Türkçe tercümesini dinlemek için dışarıdan kulaklık almanız gerekiyor. Bunu hatırlatmak istedim. Teşekkür ediyorum. Good morning. There we go. Good night, then. Hoş geldiniz. How's my Turkish? It's pretty good. As you know, I'm here representing PMI Global. You've learned a lot about what uh, PMI is doing here locally in Turkey, all across Turkey, actually, not just here in Ankara. But we also have an active group of eight thousand volunteer leaders, very similar to, to the ones you're meeting here today. So we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts, uh, what our volunteer leaders do locally, globally, and also our sponsors. Without our sponsors, both here in Turkey and around the world, we would not be as effective in uh, sharing the message, uh, many of which you've heard from our speakers earlier, about the value of what project management can do, how it helps society, how it helps organizations,
both commercial and, or private as well as public. So thank, thank you again for that. Since I'm the only speaker in English today, <laughs> unfortunately after 15 years my Turkish still isn't strong enough to be able to deliver this to you in, in Turkish. Is there anybody that wants to get a, a headset? Okay, just give, give you that chance because I, I appreciate it myself. I also wanted to note um, a little bit about our founding and the fact that we are a global community. Uh, Ismail kindly mentioned uh, Jim Snyder. I had the uh, privilege to, to, I've had the privilege to talk to him many times because as a board of, global board of directors, there are 15 of us, we need to also think about our roots. So as we look forward and do our, our futuristic thinking about where our profession will take us, not just tomorrow, three years, five years, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we need to be true to who we are. And one of the messages that, that Jim Snyder gives us regularly is, we started PMI because we believed in our profession. We knew about the value. But back in 1969, we couldn't find each other. We were looking for a community, a way for us all to come together. And in that coming together, we not only developed friendships, and I call it my PMI family. Wherever I go in the world, there's always someone from my PMI family waiting for me. But also, professionally speaking, it, it has helped me develop as a leader and as a professional. You know, when, when you're looking to solve a particular challenge in your day-to-day -day work, when you know you can email or pick up the phone and, and contact someone that you've met at a PMI event, I find that incredibly exciting. And I think that ties to our topic today, which is about knowledge transfer. We transfer information and knowledge through people, through which often come, right, we get together through communities. And as I uh, get into more detail about it, I had one more thing I wanted to mention. PMI Global has a virtual community to share knowledge called projectmanagement.com. And I was curious, how many here in the room have uh, seen the site or heard of it? Great, almost half of us. Wonderful. Well, I'm um, more than happy to, to hear your comments about it, your, your feedback, because uh, you know, face-to-face -face, uh, opportunities to be together as a community in person like we are today is critical, as well as being able to access knowledge and information to help us in our professional lives uh, virtually is, is also key. All right, great. Well, PMI Global invests millions of dollars a year in research to help promote the profession. One aspect of this research is uh, around thought leadership. For me, earlier in my career, I, I'd like to pretend that I've only been a project manager for five years. I want to be young again. But uh, my career spans almost 30 years now. And I remember back in the early days, you know, you, you would try to, to speak to your, your boss or to someone in the organization about why it's important for us to, to think about the work we're doing uh, as a project. But what would happen is there wasn't enough thought leadership about why and what the value is. So PMI, when you go out into the website, pmi.org, you will see uh, quite a few areas of thought leadership around um, strategic initiative management, around which is, deals with a lot with PMOs and portfolio management. Knowledge transfer is one, and it goes on and on and on. Communications, complexity. The world in which we operate and deliver projects gets even more complex day by day. So there's a lot there. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share with you uh, one of our most recent publications, which is on uh, knowledge transfer. So the research that PMI has done, oh, and again, I want to emphasize, it's always global. Our standards, our practices, our research goes beyond one country, goes beyond North America, because <laughs> a lot of people doubt that at times. Uh, it's global. And what we have here is clear evidence that 35% of the organizations that use knowledge transfer, that share good practices amongst each other in, as individuals, as teams, across organizations, uh, have better project outcomes. 
What do we mean by project outcomes? I'll get into that later. But that's very similar to what our, our previous speakers have mentioned. More efficiency, better effectiveness, uh, innovation. That's another one. We'll talk a little bit about why knowledge transfer ties to project management so easily. Everything from, from our processes, for example, when we um, plan and document what we're going to do and communicate it, and certainly when we're at the beginning of a project, and certainly at the end when we're closing and we capture lessons learned. These all uh, are tied, I think, I think of it as, as it's instinctive to us as project managers. We do this naturally. And as a result, we share the information from our current project, it carries over to the next one, and they build from there. What we'll see in the NASA uh, case example that I'll give in a few minutes is that information is out there. We, as individuals, uh, I think naturally like to share and help each other. But when a project or program becomes very complex and the information needs to really grow uh, and be more uh, in terms of the con context and, and how it would impact across a very complex environment, maybe, for example, we have a university doing research in one part of the space shuttle. Then you have um, a contractor developing a, a certain piece. Of, of the shuttle, and it goes on and on and on. All of the interlinkages and interrelationships between the, the, the, this extended team to deliver uh, that product, in this case a, a space shuttle, for example, is um, very complex, and the information needs to flow, and we need to share those practices. And when it doesn't um, grow across a project boundary or across an organization or across a team, we miss those key connections in terms of um, what that information means. And as you'll see in the case example, unfortunately, uh, NASA faced a series of disasters where uh, lives were lost. All right. We talked about doing projects better about delivering results better. Again, we have more facts. For organizations that use knowledge transfer, that have mechanisms for sharing best practices, don't reinvent the wheel. I think we're, we're all familiar with that saying. We can estimate, we can schedule with a higher level of uh, expertise, or accuracy, excuse me. Why? because we're building off of all of our knowledge of people who've already done this before. We have a robust repository of, uh, of experience and information to, to draw from. So what you'll see is these organizations are 75% more effective in terms of delivering their projects on time, within budget, and I think even more importantly, they're meeting the original intent of the project. How many of us have forgotten to connect with a stakeholder? Or as we've gone through a very complex project, uh, have you um, discovered that your project was out of alignment with what the business wanted to achieve? See, in the end, our reason for delivering projects and programs is for the purpose of helping organizations innovate, reposition themselves in the market, uh, uh, help an industry grow, and that's where the public-private partnership uh, is key. I had talked about innovation. This is a picture of the first steam-driven uh, car. I'm so glad we don't have to drive these today. It does not look very comfortable. Next to it is a prototype of a uh, driverless car. And it turns out that the first original uh, working model of a car, it took over 150 years to get from this point to when Henry Ford started producing uh, the Model T and the car became available to everyone. Why? Because the inventions, the innovations that were being made couldn't be shared at that time. Nowadays, knowledge and information is available everywhere. We have not only the typical car producers working on uh, a, a driverless car, but even Google and other software companies are doing that as well. And why is the concept of a driverless car um, progressing so quickly? 
It's because the information and the knowledge that each of the both private as well as public players in this uh, space are able to share very, very quickly. It's available. And there's also a culture that's changed where uh, the, innovation, the uh, information is it's understood that, that this is part of how we should operate. Keeping information to yourself does not provide value ever. So this is an example of how knowledge sharing is um, innovating and uh, driving an industry forward. Okay, in a nutshell for NASA, I think everybody can, can see these, so I don't need to read these slides to you. For me, it was very compelling to see that the NASA Challenger and the Columbia shuttle disasters were not the result of a technical problem. That wasn't the root cause. The root cause was the way information was flowing, the way it was being shared between both individuals across the team. You know, is there really trust in the team so that um, if somebody had any doubts about the safety or the, um, the technical accuracy of a part of that shuttle, that their voice could be heard. Unfortunately, what happened is their voice wasn't heard. The information was not flowing. And it didn't just happen once. It happened again 17 years later. So what we've learned is that project and program management practices, mature ones, can go a long way towards helping knowledge transfer, to being more effective, to delivering your objectives um, on time, within budget, and having real impact. But until, and through you can see the, the use of a PMO, but until you really look at knowledge more systematically, until you formalize that process of, of gathering it, of, um, of, of calling it, of sharing it um, across not only your own organization, but across any stakeholder that you're teaming with, or even the industry, you will not really have uh, the kind of success that's needed to prevent these kinds of uh, disasters. So this is, this is NASA's lesson learned. One of the reasons why I'm focusing, by the way, on NASA, uh, Boeing, Microsoft, and other organizations is that uh, they are part of PMI's Global Executive Council. So we work with these organizations to learn from them and also to understand what they need from our profession. Uh, I, I mean, I could talk for hours. I have lots and lots of case examples, but this will be something for later. I see that I have three minutes. So I'm going to uh, go through here. I thought I was going to have 30 minutes. My, my apologies. All right. Um, I, think, I think, again, we, we talk about um, how knowledge is not just information. It needs to uh, convey the context, the why, uh, that, that impact of what it really means when others get it. And these are elements of, of how you can become an, uh, a learning organization. There is a life cycle, very similar to the project management life cycle. There is also a knowledge management life cycle. And the uh, thought leadership piece that's available on the uh, PMI.org website, we'll go through this in more detail. What I want to uh, point out is that in order to implement knowledge transfer and, and grow it and mature it to, to a strong knowledge management uh, practice within your organization, you always have to look at the people, the culture, and the leadership within your organization. So we all know that as individuals, one of the reasons why we're here is we all need training, we need to grow, we need to um, you know, always be on a journey of, of learning and, and sharing knowledge. But if the organization or the project team that we work within does not have a culture of encouraging and fostering that sharing, then there's going to be a barrier, and we're not going to be as successful with the knowledge transfer. And then, of course, with the leadership side, we need a champion for it. At NASA, the chief uh, scientist or the chief engineer is now the chief uh, knowledge officer, all the way from the top. So it, it shows that it drives the culture down. And that's also um, one of the reasons why an EPMO can be very, very effective. A project management office is a natural mechanism for, um, for <laughs> I, I told them I wanted to uh, stay on time, so they're reminding me. Thank you very much. Um, a PMO is a very natural mechanism for um, 
promoting uh, standards, training, um, sharing information across the organization because each project and program that's happening across different functions within an organization is going to have different um, insights and how you bring the insights from you know many different parts of the organization together is is where the challenge is so if you're in a PMO or uh, may grow into an EPMO you have an opportunity here not only to mature project and program management practices for your organization but at the same time to really um, enable your organization to be a knowledge uh, leader I'm uh, clicking this at the wrong place there we go we as project managers are an important part of that process. I had mentioned the individual. Here's some statistics behind what I was saying. In the research that was done, 90% of the effective organizations that utilize knowledge transfer had a PMO in place. That's very, very compelling. As I said, there are steps, and behind each of these steps is an, was another slide, I had removed it from this deck, that, that gives you an insight in how to um, put a program in play. Okay. And this is an example of, um, again, I mentioned the Chief Knowledge Officer at NASA, the former Chief Engineer. This is a uh, visual of how they incorporate the importance of people in the process of, of knowledge. Can we Got a picture there, get my finger out of there. Uh, also the cultural dimension, and of course the processes and systems. All three have to work together and, and play a part in that. And I wanted to uh, close with um, a statement from the uh, Chief Technology Officer at Microsoft, again a Global Executive Council member for PMI and of course our, uh, one of our main, our, our main sponsor. At, at this event. Knowledge is what is a critical part of everything that we do, especially if you're a services organization. If you're a product-driven organization and you want to innovate, knowledge will help you do that as well. It's, it's, it's key. It's, it's just part of our, our DNA. And again, this is a uh, copy of the a visual of the knowledge, uh, the, the, sorry, the um, thought leadership piece from PMI. And uh, as I wrap up in my zero seconds left, it just went to zero, I really want to encourage everyone to find me during the break or to email me or contact me through LinkedIn so that we can continue this conversation. I feel like we just touched the surface of it and there's going to be a lot more learning that uh, happens this entire day. I want to encourage you to get the most out of every session, to engage as you already are, and thank you again for this time, and um, thank you again from PMI Global for all the incredible work and professionalism here on display at, at this event. Have a great day. Konuşmacımız adına bir ağaç sizden, bir orman bizden kampanyasına katıldık. Onun sertifikasını ve aynı zamanda biraz önce sunumumda bahsettiğim kitaplardan biri olan proje yönetiminde analitik yaklaşımlar kitabını takdim ediyorum.